Okay, so th this leads us into our, our heart and soul of problem solving, which is called dimensional analysis. Um, and dimensional analysis is using the units to solve the problem. And th this is pretty much universal um, in problem solving, too. If you are going to do this for pharmacy, if you're going to do this for physics, if you're going to do this in any measurement, uh, grams, meters, centimeters, years, hours for time, uh, this is a great way to solve problems. I'm just going to jump right in because it's pretty easy to explain, um, and then you just kind of have to practice it to get better at it. Um, I'm going to use this to solve every problem. I highly recommend it. Um, I, I learned it as a junior, and I still use it. Uh, uh, and like I said, it's a pretty simple way to solve problems. I can show you this in this five minutes. Um, and it's, it's really effective if you follow uh, the few simple rules. So, so here we go. There's how old I am. We're going to convert how many years I've been alive to seconds. We need some conversion factors. And remember, conversion factors have an infinite number of significant digits because we consider them to be exactly right. Uh, therefore, you could add 0 .000 just like we talked about before. Uh, so here's how I start to do this. So we need to know conversion factors. So if I want to know how many seconds are in a certain number of years, I need to know how to get from seconds to minutes, minutes to hours, hours to days, days. We could be more specific and say 0.25, but close enough. And then that will get us to years. So here's the setup. Start with the number that you are trying to change the units for. So I am trying to change years, and I want to know how many seconds. So now looking at my conversion factors, my conversions that I'm given, I want to choose the conversion that has years in it. So I'm going to focus on this one first, because it has years. And I want to cancel out years from my calculation. So the way I do that is I look at the conversion, and it says one year. And I'm going to put that one year down here on the bottom. So now years and years are going to cancel out, and whatever I put on the bottom, I must put what it is equal to above it. It is equal to 365 days. So now by doing this, I haven't changed the value. It's still 40.67 years. It's just that I'm changing those years because it now cancels to days. I didn't get any older because of that. Thank goodness. All right, so now I have days. So now I look at my conversion factor, and I find the one that has days in it. And once again, it's one day, so I put the day down here so that it will cancel, and I put 24 hours above it, because always put what it's equal to above it. So now days on top, days on bottom, they cancel. I have hours. So let me finish by looking at that, if you're catching on. Um, one hour is 60 minutes, and one minute is 60 seconds. So there it is to finish it. Hours cancels. Minutes cancel. I'm left with the unit of seconds. I don't want to cancel that one out. I want to leave that one there. And I have now converted from years all the way to seconds using these four conversion factors. All right, so now to solve the problem, the way it works is you multiply right across the top, you multiply right across the bottom, and then you divide those two answers. Now there's all ones across the bottom here. So I'm going to multiply 40.67. Let me bring my calculator down here. So 40.67 times 365 times 24 times 60 times 60. And there's my answer. Crazy big number. We don't want that crazy big number. Um, and so we need to focus on our significant digits. Well, the way this works is always go back to the original problem, the original number in the problem. Um, and that number has 4, so I needed to round that answer to 4. If I round it to 4, there's how many seconds? 1.283 times 10 to the ninth seconds. Because remember, significant digits and conversion factors are considered to be infinite, so we don't look at the 1 day and the 24 hours and the 60 minutes and 1 hour, etc. All right, let's try another one. All right, so right off the bat, I'm going to put 8.25 furlongs. And... I'm going to look at these conversion factors, and I'm going to pick the one that has furlongs in it because I want to cancel it. So I'm going to put it down here, and that's the first one. There it is, 8 furlongs. So though in that first number, or first conversion we just did, they were all 1s across the bottom. That's not always going to be the case. We start simple. Whatever I put down there, I put what it's equal to above it. So now I have converted from furlongs to miles. 1 mile is 5,280 feet. Miles cancel. 
Now I have feet. If I calculate it there, I find out how many feet that is. But keep going. One foot, 12 inches. One inch, 2.54 centimeters. Run out of space. One centimeter, 10 millimeters. So just like before, I'm going to multiply across the top, I'm going to multiply across the bottom, and then I'm going to divide. 8.25 times 5280 times 12 times 2.54 times 10, and divided by 8. So just like before, i got to consider significant digits. It helps if you put your calculator in scientific mode. Then it'll give you the answer in scientific notation. And it didn't. It messed it up. Um, so let's just ignore that. We're going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 1.66 times 10 to the 6. And the units are millimeters.